Kim Nixon. Photograph later on. Um, two he, meters. We leave these off or take them on? I know, I take them off. You don't. Question for Darren Randolph. What kind of match you expect tomorrow? Um, another another tough another tough game. Um, it hasn't been that long ago since we last played Finland um, in Dublin. Uh, it was a tough game, close game. Um, we both obviously played games in between. Uh, we're probably more um, up to speed with things and, 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 and fitter as a group. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a very tough game. Uh, as a goalkeeper, uh, what do you see as Finland's main threats uh, as an, their attacking players? Are you really familiar with them? Uh, yeah, familiar with, obviously. Puki from his time at, uh, in England, and um, obviously from playing against him last time and watching, watching uh, you know their games in the in this Nations League. Um, so far, got some very good players, some uh, some good movement, some good relationships um, in different parts of the pitch. Um, so they're definitely a, a threat, um, and we we'll need to be you know at our at our best to uh, try and limit the amount of chances that. Uh, they're able to create. Also, as an experienced experienced player, uh, your team has had a little bit, uh, maybe tough results lately. Loss on penalties against Slovakia, and now plenty of absentees. And you have young players come to the team to replace those. First, kind of first team players. Uh, what kind of morale in the team you experienced, there is? Uh, the morale's high. It's uh, and the manager will obviously back me up on this when he speaks. Um, you know, we're not we're bringing in you know good players that, that also deserve to be uh, in the squad. Um, and again, it's it'll be a chance for for the younger players coming through to show what they can do um, and prove to, prove to everybody, you know. What, again, why they were picked and why they belong belong here, um, and it can be the start of, uh, of their international journey, um, which is which can be a very good one, but it also goes very quick because I'm, I'm kind of on the other end of the scale uh, to, to to some of the younger ones coming in. But you know, despite the the loss on penalties and and, and the last game, you know, we've we performed well. Uh, we've we've had chances. Um, you know, we're not coming in off the back of getting hammered in two games and, and, and losing both of them. We've actually played some good football, had some had some great chances. Um, so morale's, morale is high. It's, it's, been, it's been tough, but, you know, it's, it's kind of at a time now where you just need to kind of uh, get together as a group and, um, you know, prepare to, to work for each other and uh, just put the head down and, 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 and take and tackle, sorry, the, uh, the hard time ahead. Okay, good evening, Mikael Eravori from Finnish FA, and I have a couple of questions from Irish media. I believe all of them are directed to the head coach. So the first one, apart from flying today, were travel arrangements any different this time around, and will they be different in the future? Uh, well, I think, um, yeah, there, there were some differences. Um, but again, that would be, you know, mainly the operations director would 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 mainly plan that in relation to with 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 uh, all the senior management. So I think uh, I spoke to him yesterday in relation to the flight plan. So we did we did change some things, but uh, that's um, these are things that everyone is learning. You know, there are no experts at the moment in this because it's a real learning curve for so many people. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a real learning curve for everyone, really. And uh, so, yeah, there will be there will be changes, I would think, going going forward. 
And the next one, uh, what is the time, timeline on the player who tested positive, then negative, and then positive again? How far back does uh, contact tracing go? Well, again, that's a question really for the for the medical department, you know, and the, and the manager of the football team. And I think uh, um, it was all pretty quickly. It was all done really within probably, you know, within a, within it all within a, in a day, really all within a day. So it was all, it all happened, you know, the tr three tests, one night and then two, very quickly. So. It was uh, it was all within a day, really. Okay. Uh, do you have faith in the testing system? Well, I think uh, you know it's hard to believe that we lost two players because of for 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 the playoff. You know, at such a late stage because of a false positive, you know, um, connected to to contact tracing. So I think uh, obviously the. the the rules and if it was a Dutch player, for example, a player from Holland, he wouldn't have had a problem because their, their rules are 1.5 metres. If it was a player in England, they wouldn't have had a problem. But Ireland, the HSC rules are much more stringent than uh, the health authorities in Ireland, much more stringent than, than anywhere else in Europe, I, I think. So I think uh, it's um, other countries wouldn't have been deemed... Um, deemed as, as contact tracing, but in our country we have to abide by the, the, the law and uh, that's, 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 what, 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 uh, that's what the medical department did. Okay, uh, have you ever had a situation where uh, you were so drawn away of your regular preparations for a big game disrupted to anything like this extent? Listen, there, there are people experiencing far worse than we are at the moment. I think, you know, it's this, this uh, you know, coronavirus has been, you know, killed thousands of people throughout Europe and, and bigger numbers throughout the world. So it's, it's, you know, it's been bigger than sport. But I think for us, yeah, no, it, it, had, it did have an impact over the last, for example, We've had eight players missing over the last week because of contract tracing. So, you know, for, for you know, this week, eight players. So, um, so that, that, that has been significant in, in, uh, in, you know, we'd eight players through contract tracing missing against Wales the other day. And we hadn't got, obviously, David McGoldrick and James McCarthy were injured. And we already had Seamus Coleman and Harry Hart or Daryl Lennon out of the original squad. So we had 13 players unavailable for the game against Wales. So um, considering that, I think the players did remarkably well, considering the 13 players were unavailable. And I think they did really well. And uh, we're unfortunate not to win, really. Uh, do you fear, fear this may be the last game for some time? This game will be the last game? All right. Um, I don't think so. I don't think it will be. No, uh, I think uh, you know. I think it's difficult to be certain, but I think in life there are challenges, and society must exist, and you must try and overcome hurdles in your life or in society. You know, I think it's important that history has taught us that. It's thrown up many challenges throughout the ages and I think we've always had to overcome obstacles and sport is an important part of life. People need something to look forward to. And the Irish national team are very important within Irish sport and life, you know, hugely important. And I think uh, um, it's the pinnacle of sport in life in Ireland, you know, the Irish international football team. And I think... Uh, along with other sports, but it's a special, very spe special place in the hearts of the Irish, the Irish support, supporters. And I think, uh, you know, so it's, it's great if it does continue. You know, obviously we've had setbacks and people have to review that, uh, but it's, uh, you would hope it's good news if it continues. And that's for sure. Okay, then if we move on 
to the playing matters more. Uh, first of all, did Brighton initially have an issue with Aaron Connell's return? Is his return bittersweet? No, Brighton have been fantastic. You know, I think uh, the manager, Graham Potter, uh, you know, who uh, is a brilliant, brilliant football man, and, you know, he understands that we have two young players here, Aaron Connolly and Jason Malumby from Brighton, who have come from Ireland into Brighton Duty, um, Youth Academy and are in there playing their first team now. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he understands the importance of playing for your national team, and he's been very, he's been brilliant, really, you know. Okay, then, uh, what do you want to see the team improve on from the last game versus Finland? Is your confidence affected somehow? Yeah, I think, I think the team, the last game against Finland, was in the middle of the off-season. I think for both teams as well. I think it, we can't just say that for us. It was for Finland also. But <clears throat> it was a strange time. The players were, were um, in the middle of their off-season. And, um, you know, but Finland, you know, are a very, very good team. They proved that by getting to the European Championships. I think uh, they're nearly like a club team in that they, they're very certain, very consistent in their selection. And all the players are very certain of their roles in the team. There's a very, very good team ethic. And they can play in different ways, uh, different tactical systems. So uh, Finland are, uh, you know, have, have done, done, they've maximised They've maximised their resources very, very well. Okay, given the lack of goals and Aaron Connolly's ability to play in the two-man attack, uh, are you considering playing two up front or changing to such a system during the game if needed? Uh, two up front, yeah, it's it's a possibility. You know, everything everything's a possibility, and certainly Aaron uh, Aaron has that versatility that he can play in different positions. And of course, we, you know, we're not, we're not tied to one system. Okay, then about uh, Daryl Horgan display uh, against Wales, what do you say about his immediate and long-term Ireland prospects, given out of frame for over two years? Well, small steps. You know, Daryl wasn't an, wasn't named in the initial squad, and I think, you know, obviously, some players had to for the reasons spoken about. You know, you'd like to Callum Robinson, Callum O'Dowd. Um, dropping in in the wider areas, and Aaron Connolly um, leaving the squad, and you know, so he came in and and uh, he showed up very well in training and had a made an impact as a substitute against Wales and had a positive impact. Okay, and the very last one. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Dara O'Shea improved since you first went to watch him and do you, uh, do you think he has the attributes to try and fill a similar role to John Egan if needed? Um, Dara has, has improved a lot. He's been a consistent improver. You know, he's part of the West Brom team that won promotion um, playing, playing most weeks and he's been ever present in there in their Premiership team this year and um, he's still only 20 years of age so he has a very good future ahead of him. John Egan, no, he's not at the level of John Egan. John Egan is, you know, an experienced Premier Division player who has is a terrific, terrific uh, player really for, for Ireland and Dara is just learning and, um, you know, learning the game still. And, uh, but he has, has a great attitude and he always has, shows a great desire to get better. A question for head coach. For, if you look for this game, uh, you told about us a little bit about the preparations and how hard is it has been because of the many absentees. Uh, how are you believing your team is ready for tomorrow? As you said, you believe Finland is a really good team. Yeah, I think um, I, I, you know I think we've got a lot of good young players coming through the system in Ireland, and you know um, so and we have some very very good experienced players as well. So um, you know I think it's 
sometimes um, when players are missing, it gives other players an opportunity that they may not have had. And that's, you know, so it's interesting to see what that brings. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks.